At the start of the 18th century, Poland, Russia, and Sweden clashed in the Great Northern War. Whoever won would emerge as a preeminent power in Northern Europe and solidify themselves as a global hegemon. Throughout the conflict, Sweden was defeated, Poland was left in ruins, and Russia remained unscathed, taking their place among the great states of Europe. But don't get down, you were 28,000 Swedes and the 90% who haven't subscribed yet. History was forever changed in the 1700s as Sweden wins the Great Northern War. But it won't be me guiding the video. My good friend, just a Greek historian, will lead this one. He makes awesome alternate history videos and his channel's linked below, so go check him out after this one. I'm hosting the Congress of Vienna on my Discord server, having you redraw Europe after the Napoleonic Wars. It's next Friday, June 21st. Sign up if you're interested. Now, on to the video. Today, when we think of Sweden, we come to imagine a peaceful place, devoid of any walls. However, this was not always the case, as Sweden had historically been one of Europe's greatest powers. Even as early as the late 16th century, Sweden had dominated the Baltic Sea, and it looked as if that was going to stay the case. Denmark and the Russians had been defeated numerous times before, and now Sweden was starting to approach on German territory. Understandably, many of Sweden's neighbors weren't happy with Swedish domination over the Baltic and wanted revenge. The perfect opportunity would arise after the Swedish king died and his successor, Charles XII, ascended the throne when he was just a teenager. As a result, Denmark, Norway, Russia and Saxony, which was in a personal union with Poland, saw this as their chance to strike and they declared the war on the 22nd of February 1700, hoping for an easy victory. However, Charles wasn't any ordinary teenager and he was proved to be a very competent leader. In just a few months after threatening Copenhagen, Sweden forced Denmark Norway to sign peace. Meanwhile, in the east, the Russians were trying to besiege the city of Narva. At this time, Russia was led by Peter I, also known as Peter the Great who had ambitions to modernize and westernize his country. Peter had introduced numerous reforms from modernizing the Russian military to adopting western customs and technology. Despite that, the progress he had made thus far wouldn't be enough as the Swedish army successfully defeated the Russians and pushed them out of Narva for good. Charles then set his sights on Poland, marching southwards and managing to reach Warsaw in 17 there, Charles removed the Saxon king Augustus and installed Stanislav, a Polish nobleman loyal to him as a puppet ruler. The installation of Stanislav would cause a civil war to erupt within the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth as the nobility, who still supported Augustus, were backed by Saxony and Russia. Charles, not to be deterred, continued to score military victories and a bit later managed to fully occupy Saxony, forcing Augustus to surrender. However, while all of this was happening, Russia founded the city of St. Petersburg in the region of Ingria which they occupied. Thus, Charles would prepare for his ultimate invasion of Russia with the hope of reaching Moscow and ending the war. In 1708, he entered Little Russia, modern-day Ukraine, where he hoped to count on support from the Cossacks and the abundance of wheat. The Russians then took the opportunity to intercept the reinforcing army while a brutal winter set in, leading to immense suffering among the Swedish troops. Finally, at the Battle of Poltava in 1709, the Swedish army was decisively defeated. Charles, wounded and his army in disarray, took refuge in the Ottoman Empire. This defeat would mark a turning point in the war, as Russia would begin to push into Finland, as well as convincing Saxony and Denmark-Norway to re-enter the war. With enemies coming from every side, Sweden was forced to sign a peace in 1721. The Treaty of Nystad marked the end of the Swedish Empire and the rise of Russia as a major European player. Peter the 
Great would declare his country an empire and St. Petersburg became the country's new capital. As for Sweden, their strength continued to dwindle as they were further reduced in size. Sweden pulled herself out of most European affairs and became the neutral country we all know and love today. Well, until they decided to join NATO, that is, but that's a story for another time. So, that raises the obvious question. What if Charles XII had managed to win at the Battle of Poltava, marching to Moscow and ending the war? For this to happen, not much needs to be changed. We will have the Russians severely fumble their military operation, failing to cut off their reinforcing army, greatly strengthening Charles' position. As such, when they never battle of Poltava takes place, the Swedes would be much more prepared and with some luck manage to defeat the Russians and begin their march to Moscow. Charles would score victory after victory and the Russian army would find themselves in total disarray. As a result, when the Swedes reach Moscow, they would impose an extremely harsh peace treaty on Russia. Karelia would be seized and the Baltic border would also be moved significantly eastward to ensure that Russia could never threaten the Baltic Sea again. On top of the territorial losses, St. Petersburg would be destroyed, serving as a symbolic defeat on Peter's liberal intentions. As for Poland, Stanislaw would remain in power and expand slightly into Russia, solidifying Swedish dominance over Eastern Europe. Denmark would suffer the least, losing Holstein Gottorp and the largely uninhabited northern territories of Norway. After all of this is sorted out, Peter Peter's popularity within Russia would dwindle, as his opponents, who were against the westernization and modernization of Russia, would grow in power. Soon, Peter would be overthrown and his son, Alexei, a staunch conservative, would take the throne, quickly undoing his father's reforms. Most of the population would get behind him, as many Russians were already against Peter's reforms, viewing them as foreign interventions that went against the traditional Russian society. Russia would thus remain a backwater state, on the edge of the European continent, too weak to actually become a great power. Instead of the rise of Russia we saw in our timeline, Sweden remained as the great power they had always been, having crumbled Russia to such an extent that the possibility of them ever becoming a great power is called into question. So, what's next? But before we continue, I would like to give a massive thanks to Videntis for hosting me on his channel. If you would like to see more content made by me, consider checking out my channel in the description. Anyways, let's get back with the video. Well, Charles would become a national hero celebrated as Charles the Great. His victories and the expansion of the Swedish Empire would cement his legacy as one of the greatest military leaders in Swedish history. Over the coming years, he would consolidate his control over the country and deal with police uprisings that may come as a result of his rule. Russia, meanwhile, would likely pull herself out of Western European politics, setting their sights on Asia and the Ottomans. The reign of Peter would be forever stained by his defeat against the Swedish and the humiliation that came with it. After the dust settles, Eastern and Northern Europe would be relatively peaceful, as Russia would simply be too weak to try to recover the their losses. On top of that, with Swedish domination over Poland being assured, the war of the Polish succession is likely avoided in this timeline, as the Swedes would likely oust Augustus completely so he doesn't come to challenge the Swedish position. However, though that conflict might have been avoided, the war of the Austrian succession would still kick in. Sensing weakness, Sweden would join the side of Prussia with the hope of cannibalizing further German land. With Swedish help, the Prussians would occupy all of Silesia fairly quickly, while the Bavarian army would capture Prague. On top of that, the next year, Charles VII, the King of Bavaria, 
that would permanently break Habsburg rule over the HRE by being elected as Holy Roman Emperor. Though Maria Theresa would be able to convince the Hungarian Kingdom to send aid, it would largely be futile as the Bavarian army with major help from the Swedes would reach Vienna regardless, forcing an end to the conflict. Prussia would retain Silesia and the French the Austrian Netherlands. On top of that, the Habsburgs would be forced to relinquish control over Bohemia, serving as a checkmate towards Austria in case of a future war. As for Sweden, they'd see major expansion into the Holy Roman Empire. Maria Theresa would be allowed to stay in power, however, she would have to pass the title of Holy Roman Emperor over to the Bavarian King. At the end of the war, Russia feels betrayed by Sweden, who has now got a significant foothold into Germany. Meanwhile, on the other side of the continent, the British would grow wary of the power that France has started to gain and move diplomatically closer to Prussia setting the stage for an alternate Seven Years' War. At the same time, Russia would attempt to make a comeback to the European stage by allying themselves with the British, hoping to defeat Sweden once and for all. Of course, just like in our timeline, this war would best be described as two separate wars being fought at the same time. In the West, the war would be relatively unchanged, with the French suffering enormous defeats in the colonies and elsewhere. In the East, however, the Russian army would at this point have fallen so far behind that the Swedes would basically march to Moscow unopposed. The Swedes would achieve some major victories and the Russian position would disintegrate, further discrediting the already weak state. The Prussians too, though better prepared than the Russians, would stand no chance against the powerful Swedish army. A smaller force is sent to the Prussian heartland, while another is headed for Brandenburg. Bohemia would also join the war against Prussia with the hope of retaking Silesia. So, as the Swedes lay siege to Königsberg and the Prussian morale is at an all-time low, the Bohemians would also start achieving minor victories against the Prussians. Prussia would fight until the bitter end, but ultimately their defenses would disintegrate and Berlin would fall, which would force the Prussians to negotiate negotiate on unfavorable terms. They would have to give up Pomerania, Silesia and parts of East Prussia, essentially making them dependent on Sweden. Swedish controlled Poland would also expand into Little Russia, taking important cities like Kiev and Smolensk. Russia would thus lose any respect it had, if it had any at this point, and would be dubbed the insignificant sick man of Europe. Sweden stands tall as the greatest European power and it seems that nothing can threaten that position. However, news reached the Emperor that a revolution in France is threatening to tear the continent apart. Sweden is unconcerned with the revolution, seemingly brushing it off, not knowing the danger that this would actually pose. But hey, at this point we've moved too far into the scenario to continue making further predictions. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and thanks a lot again to Videl for hosting me on his channel. If you would like to see more content made by me, make sure to check out my channel in the description below. And as always, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and leave a comment below to boost the algorithm. Anyways, goodbye.